Hi friends, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to share about seven new releases that are coming out in the next three months, April, May, and June, that I'm excited about. These are all Christian fiction and they are all authors I have read from previously. So I'm going to share the release date, the title of the book, and a brief description of the book, and kind of why I'm excited about it, what's making me look forward to it. So the first two books I'm going to talk about are both releasing April the 5th. The first book is called What Matters Most by Courtney Walsh. It is a contemporary romance and it is book three of the Nantucket love story. Now this series can be read as standalones. The well the setting carries over and the characters might but not enough that you can't you could totally read them out of order. So this one, Emma Woodson is hoping the cobblestone streets of Nantucket and the charm of her late husband's family cottage will be the fresh start she and her young son CJ need. Securing a dream job at an art gallery is one more step along the path to a new life and away from a piece of her history she hopes will never be revealed. Falling in love with the kind and handsome guy she hires to clean out the rental apartment above the garage wasn't part of the plan. Jameson Shaw came to Nantucket for one reason, deliver his letter to Emma and never return. But when he sees an opportunity to help her, he takes a chance, desperate to atone for his past. He never planned to keep his connection to her husband a secret or to fall in love with her. After all, he knows their new relationship might not, might not survive the discovery of who he really is. This one just really intrigues me. Um, Nantucket, such a beautiful setting. Um, maybe someday I'll get to visit in person. Um, never been. But just the setting that Courtney Walsh has created in the previous books have just made me fall in love with it. And this, you know, the small town charm. And they have a connection. Emma and Jameson have a connection, but they don't, Emma doesn't know what the connection is. And then they connect, like, it just, it sounds like it could be really good. So I can't wait for that one. Then the next book that releases on April the 5th is Sea Glass Cottage by Irene Hannon. This is also a contemporary romance. It is book eight of her Hope Harbor, of her Hope Harbor series. Again, this is another series that can be read as standalone. This storyline does not continue from, but there are characters that carry over into each book. Um, so this one says, Christy Reese is desperate. The one time Golden Girl's life has tarnished and a cascade of setbacks, setbacks has left her reeling. She needs help and she's certain Jack Colby is in a position to provide it. When she shows up in Hope Harbor, however, Jack wants nothing to do with the woman who betrayed him. He's built a new life on the Oregon coast and there's no room in it for Christy even after she takes refuge in a charming but mysterious cottage nearby. Yet it soon becomes apparent his opinion of her may need revi revising, especially when he ends up needing her help. Can these two hurting souls make peace with their past and open their hearts to a new beginning? So again, I love the setting of Hope Harbor that Irene Hannon has created. I have read five of these books. I need to read six and seven and then... I will read this one um, and also the theory like second chance they knew each other in the past so that just I, I really like second chance stories so then on April the 12th um, relative justice by Robert Whitlow comes out this is considered a mystery legal thriller for the attorneys at Cobb and Cobb the pursuit of justice is about more than legal expertise. It's a family matter. David Cobb is not a typical lawyer. He's more interested in dispensing God's wisdom than per permanent legal advice. High stakes litigation is way outside of his comfort zone. For many years, Zeke Caldwell has been concocting home remedies made from natural ingredients found in the coastal marshes near Wilmington, North Carolina. One of his remedies proved so effective that he patented it with the help of David's father. Now he suspects a big drug company has stolen his formula. What he doesn't know is that the theft has deeper, more evil roots. When Zeke asked David to help fight the drug company, 
David knows the suit is beyond his expertise and experience. But his sister-in-law, Caitlin Cobb, is a rising star attorney in a prestigious Washington, D.C. law firm. The courtroom is her second home. Could she help? Would she even consider it? Life circumstances compel the lawyers to face not only patent piracy, but personal obstacles and struggles that threaten to rip apart the fabric of the family. The fight for Zeke requires all the relatives to unite for justice. So I, I'm looking forward to this one because one, I just recently finished a Robert Whitlow story and I just, I love the way he ties in law and family connections and the characters. Like I just, it's not heavy on law, but you get it. Um, and then this just, why does it take the whole family? Like what does, what's going on that's created this? So that's why I'm looking forward to that one. Then on May 3rd, Turn to Me by Becky Wade releases. This is a contemporary romance. It is book three of the Misty River series. Uh, I've read book one. I have not read book two yet. And obviously book three is not out yet. I don't, I can't remember if this could be read individually or if it really should be read as a, in a series order because I don't remember enough from book one. So, sorry, I can't help you there. So this one says, his promise will cost him far more than he imagined. Guilt has defined Luke Dempsey's life, but it was self-destructiveness that landed him in prison. When his friend and fellow inmate lie, da lie dying shortly before Luke's release, the older man revealed he left a string of clues for his daughter Finley that will lead her to the treasure he's hidden. Worried that she won't be the only one pursuing the treasure, he gains Luke's promise to protect her until the end of her search. Spunky and idealistic Finley Sutherland is the owner of an animal rescue center and a defender of lost causes. She accepts Luke's help on the treasure hunt while secretly planning to help him in return by coaxing him to embrace the forgiveness he's long denied himself. As they draw closer to the final clue, their reasons for resisting each other begin to crumble, and Luke realizes his promise will push him to the limit in more, more ways than one. He'll do his best to shield Finley from unseen threats, but who's going to shield him from losing his heart? So these two characters come together in kind of one has one goal, one has another goal, and but their goals end up merging and they fight feeling. I, I don't know. So it just, it sounds really interesting. And Becky Wade, again, is another author that I've really enjoyed a lot of her stories. Then on June the 7th, the Sun, Sunburst by Susan May Warren releases. It is a romantic suspense. This is book two of her Sky King Ranch series. Book one just came out in January and book three is set to be released in November. I love that all three books are being released in one year. So because I like to read series kind of back to back, I'm going to wait till November to get all three of them so that I can read them back to back. But, and Susan May Warren is another author that, especially in the suspense category, is kind of an auto buy. I'm going to read the description, um, but a lot of times I don't because I just know that I'm going to be intrigued by her books. So it says, when former Navy SEAL and lifelong bachelor, bachelor <laughs> Ranger Kingston is called upon to take part in a rescue mission to save his brother Colt, who has been kidnapped by terrorists in Nigeria. He is shocked to find among the hostages a woman he knows and could never forget. Naomi Sutton was attempting to return a young girl to her family in Boko Haram territory when she and the girl found themselves taken hostage along with several others. And while Ranger Kingston may be able to get the hostages away from their captors, He'll need Naomi's help if he ever hopes to get out of Nigeria alive. Her solution? Poe is husband and wife. But when her uncle discovers the union, he insists on a traditional Nigerian wedding, binding Naomi to a man destined to break her heart. Worse, she's discovered the real reason she was kidnapped, and anyone around her is bound to be caught in the crossfire, including her so-called new husband. 
She'll need to figure out a way to leave the man she loves if she wants to save his life. So that just, that sounds intriguing. So it's a marriage of convenience kind of story with action, with life-threatening situations thrown in. Like that just, I can't wait. <laughs> so also on June the 7th, In Honor's Defense by Karen Whitmire releases. This is a historical fiction. It is book three of the Hangers Horseman series. So it, the description says, Luke Davenport has been fighting all his life for respect, for country, and most recently for those unable to fight for themselves. But now that his horsemen brothers are domesticated, he's left alone to battle the wildness within. When an opportunity arises to take a job on his own, he jumps at the chance. Demarius Baxter has mastered the art of invisibility. Plain and quiet, she hides in books and needlework, content to be overlooked until her brother dies suddenly, leaving her custody of her nephew. She moves to Texas to care for Nate, determined to create a family for herself that she never thought she'd have. When Nate stumbles into the path of the wrestlers Luke is tracking, Luke acts to protect him and winds up gravely injured. Feeling indebted, Demarius nurse, nurses Luke back to health, but suspicions grow regarding the death of her brother, and the more questions they ask, the more danger appears threatening the family Luke may be unable to live without. So Karen Whitmire is an author that I fell in love with a few years ago. Um, so I've read all kind of all her books since then, almost all her books. So I have read book one of this series. I have not read book two yet. I do own it, but I plan on waiting to read it until this book releases so that I can read two and three together. And most likely I'll read one again and two and three together. Um, but again, it's a Western, it's set in Texas, he's a cowboy, it's historical, and then she hides in books, she's quiet, reserved, kind of my type of person. <laughs> um, so I'm really, I'm really interested to see where this one's going to go. Then the last book I'm going to mention also releases on June the 7th. It is called I'll Be Seeing You by Robin Lee Hatcher. This is a dual timeline, which just totally intrigues me. I've really gotten into historical fiction in the last couple of years, probably. Um, and then the kind of, I'm, I have enjoyed books that kind of tie the both, have a historical line and a contemporary line in them. And the way that authors tend to weave them together has just intrigued me. So this one says, Generations of secrets unfold as a young college student learns the truth about her great-grandmother's World War II heartbreak and love. Brianna Hastings' life seems dull and full of disappointment until a handsome young man visits her church. She's instantly submitted by the charming Greg who leads an exciting, independent life, the kind of life she longs for. But when a college history assignment forces Brianna to interview her great-grandmother about life during World War II, she can't believe it when Daisy presses her with questions about Greg's character. What sort of man is he? Who is he at his core? What could her great-grandmother possibly know about love at first sight? The questions take both women back to Boise, Idaho in the early 1940s, when war emphasized how fragile life could be. Daisy and her older sister pined for the same handsome bomber pilot until one night of terrible judgment reveals their true characters and drives them apart. Trying to protect the people she loves the most, Daisy condemns herself to live lie. In the years that follow, as Daisy grapples with the consequences, she receives unexpected grace from a man she's known her whole life but never looked at twice. Could she, what she learned about love save Brianna from heartache three generations later? So again, I'm just, I'm intrigued by this. I'm curious to see kind of what happened in Daisy's life that is going to help Brianna now, three generations later. And how are the two stories going to tie in? So we'll see. So those are the seven books that I'm really looking forward to in the coming months. Uh, what books are you interested in? What should I be adding? Should I be adding others to my list? Let me know. Thank you. Have a good day.